Hi, this is Adian. Today I'm having a look at SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah by Bandai. This is a pretty huge box that King Ghidorah comes in. Uh, I, I sort of knew to expect this based on other people's reviews, but to give you an idea, here is my ruler. This box is almost as tall as my ruler, so it comes to 35 centimeters tall. Uh, 36 centimeters wide. It's, it's really huge. I've actually had this King Ghidorah since uh, almost the beginning of the year and I just I've opened it and had a bit of a play with it but look to be honest it isn't one of my favorite Monster Arts toys and that's why I've put off reviewing, reviewing it until now but uh, the thing that's pushed me to just show this guy off is that pretty soon I'm gonna have Destroyer so I don't want to get uh, ahead of myself doing Destroyer before I've shown King Ghidorah. Pretty standard stuff on the box, not a lot of nice pictures of what King Ghidorah is going to look like. Let's get it open and have a look inside. Here we have King Ghidorah. Just for clarity's sake, the stance you see him in right here is exactly the position he comes inside the plastic bubble. I just thought I would uh, show that. Uh, he has all kinds of little inserts that wrap between the necks, between the wings, underneath. It, it holds him in nice and snugly like this to avoid damage. Now I've heard people complaining that various bits had popped off on them in transit, uh, maybe the heads. I have had no issues with this guy whatsoever, so it's a bit hard for me to comment on any of those uh, problems. As far as my one is concerned, it, it had no issues at all. It was packed really well in the box. To give an idea of the real size of this guy from uh, toe to the top of his head in a natural pose, he is 21 to 22 centimeters tall. Uh, obviously at the wing tip, he gets much taller. I know that's a little bit off camera, but at the tip of his wing, he reaches 30 centimeters tall. And if you stretch his head directly up like that he can come to 26 centimeters tall so height wise he is very tall figure but apart from that he doesn't have a big feeling when i look at him he he's quite skinny uh, in the neck here and his tail and even the wing parts they're all all relatively thin and in fact that's probably the part about this figure that I least like and I guess that's a bit unfair because he is pretty show accurate uh, I'm just judging him because my preference is a Showa style King Ghidorah and he has a kind of woolly features if you look at his face here this guy is more serpentile in the way that he looks and I, I like the kind of more more woolly and fat head and thick necks that the, the older style King Ghidorah has. Uh, I'm guessing that we might get one given that Showa Godzilla has been announced. Uh, but to give you some idea of the kind of thing that I do like, I'll just give you a bit of a comparison. So here we go with this big Grand King Ghidorah vinyl. And you can see that his proportions are more stubby. He's got more squat, thick legs, thicker parts of his neck here and I mean, I'm not giving you this comparison as a height comparison I don't mind the height of this guy but uh, it's just he's it's just too skinny for me and it makes him look a little bit weak in comparison to Godzilla I think and both of these are very nice nice figures and by no means am I saying that this is rubbish it's a fantastic figure it's just not not one of my favorites now having gotten that little complaint out of the way let's go over what is good about this figure and the first thing which is really striking is he is covered in beautiful shiny gold paint you can see it goes over every part of the toy the whole way around underneath on the wings if I can just focus on these wings, you can see that the paint on the wings, it looks like satin. If you didn't know better, 
you would think that these are actually some kind of flexible material, but they are a rigid piece. And I think this this flat piece is glued into here because there seems to be some kind of uh, seam between the textured and flat sections, but it is quite rigid. I've been trying to determine whether it is molded in this kind of glossy plastic or if it's actually paint. Um, I'm, I'm leaning on the side of paint, but it's, it is very hard to tell. I've gone over all kinds of parts of this guy looking for a spot where the gold has rubbed off where I could show you that it's, it's not gold all the way through. But honestly, I, I can't find a place where the gold has rubbed off. It's uh, either very thick, painted to a high standard so it can take uh, normal use, or it's gold the whole way through, or the paint is just super durable. Uh, either way, you couldn't ask for a better result with this paint, and it would take pretty heavy usage to scratch it if it is paint. Uh, I'm not willing to take a little knife to it and scratch it just to tell. Oh, hang on, maybe... I guess it wouldn't hurt. Let's have a look. Ah, there you go. Look at that. Uh, I try to focus, it's a little bit hard to see. Underneath it is a creamy coloured plastic, so it is paint. The gold we're looking at is definitely paint because if you if you abuse your toy with a screwdriver you can definitely see the plastic underneath but it did take quite a bit of work to do that and unless unless you're going to sort of rough up the whole visible surface of this guy it's not going to happen on its own accord the sculpt itself is phenomenal i mean every square millimeter of this toy has been sculpted in some way and you know it's fitting with the other SH monster arts I've been happy with every single release that I've bought but this guy in particular is is different from the others his sculpt is more angular and you can see the individual scales on Godzilla he's just sort of bulbous but uh, King Ghidorah has pointy scales all over the place it's really really fantastic and the different textures it's just, it, it blows my mind, to be honest. I, it, I don't understand how a person could sculpt this. It's, it's done so well. I've got to give credit where credit's due. I wish I could read the box to tell you who sculpted it. Uh, but unfortunately, it's all in Japanese. For posability, let's start with the foot. We have this sort of ankle movement here, and the foot is on a ball which is above the ankle, and another ball which is under the ankle. So quite a, a wide range, and that... What that allows you to do is give him these wide-legged stances. Apart from that, he's got a relatively good knee joint. You can hear it squeaking away there. And a somewhat limited hip joint. With the good detail of being able to move out like that, as I said. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put him in a wide-legged stance. And let's just... I mean, you can definitely see that he is capable of... Uh, of looking like he's bracing himself for an oncoming attack from Godzilla. Apart from that, he's got uh, this ab crunch. It's a very, very limited ab crunch, uh, which just moves along the chest line here. His necks can go virtually straight up like this, all the way to bent in like this, but that is the limit. I would have been even more impressed if he could uh, almost bend down and grab something in this area down here directly in front of him because it seems like a, a weak spot if an enemy could get in here and he can't reach that enemy but I understand some allowances have to be made for the reality of this of the sculpt and uh, if it was that poseable there'd be gaps everywhere the head itself has a jaw which is uh, super wide in its range of motion and uh, in fact I think too much so some of the, the places it can get are just unnatural and don't look good. And I think it's because there's a single ball joint under here. And uh, later on, I think it was Burning Godzilla where he has a, a much more aligned jaw. I think that that is a better way to go. This jaw is just, just too loose. The tongue is also poseable to somewhat of a degree. It can swing out to the sides like that. So... Because it's flexible, you do get a bit of up and down, but really what it is, 
it's on a little pin that lets you to uh, swing it out like that. These horns are flexible so they're not going to snap off as well which is lucky because they're so thin. Having a look at his eye, if I can focus on it, his eye is a painted detail and it's painted in a brown with just a little bit of uh, black through the pupil but it, it is very hard to see because the brown is so similar in colour to the gold, the gold of his skin. The teeth are also individually painted white and that's done pretty well too, not much bleed through of the red mouth colour, just in a few spots. Moving down to the tail, or the tails, we've got two of them, they can curve right back like this or go right back the other way. They're a little bit weak, this joint here is a little bit too flexible and if you try to put it up like that over time it will fall, like it doesn't want to do it, it doesn't want to fall now. You know, there's always the, when you put it on camera, it won't do it. But when you put it on the shelf, I've found that if I, if I stick the tail out, uh, more often than not, over time, it will just plop back down until that midsection is touching the ground like that. And finally, we come to what is uh, perhaps the worst point of the toy, this wing articulation. And you can see already that there is a big, ugly gap here. This gap forms really easily. Pretty much no matter how you put it over time this wing will just move itself down like that and playing with the toy does make it looser so when I first got it it was pretty stiff but uh, I played with it a little bit not too much but just from the few times that I have played with it it, it starts to become loose now. I'll try to get a little bit of a shot there you can see that it's on a kind of hinge so there's a hinge like this which is pegged in so the hint it can rotate like this move up and down like this and then to top that off at the end it can bend from side to side so we've got a lot of different uh, planes of motion that this joint can achieve but because they're all kind of disjointed from each other one's here one's here one's here what it means is that you feel like moving it as if it's a ball but if you do apply force in a plane which is not the plane that that particular point is bending, it has a tendency to snap. So mine hasn't snapped, but uh, a lot of people have snapped their wings off. And I mean, I think right now on BBTS, there's one with the wing snapped off in their used section at a reduced price. And a lot of people have been complaining about that. So uh, luckily I was aware of that before I opened this guy. And I've always been really slow and careful to bend this this wing here, but uh, it is a very bad weakness in the figure and I'm surprised it made it through to the final toy. To give you some idea about the range of motion that you get from that, what you can do is touch the wings together. So you can see that's how far they can move in the upwards position, or they can bend all the way down like this to be kind of like bat wings a more uh, intimidating look and he can also get some good flying kind of poses so we know Ghidorah kind of zooms around like this making that kind of squeaky noise with his three heads at the same time while wildly flailing around and I think this piece is ideally suited to be hung from the ceiling maybe with some cotton or fishing line or something and he looks really fantastic flying around in fact that's that's my very favorite way to pose him in flight mode and given that he spends a lot of his time in different movies that he's in flying I think that's really cool here's probably the most important scale shot um, we've got a ordinary plain Godzilla against this Ghidorah you can see Godzilla comes up under his necks I know this is a little bit hard to see He's very dark coloured, it doesn't show up good on the, the black background. But uh, the thing that kind of bothers me with this is it always seems like he should be shoulder to shoulder from the movie. I'm, I'm no expert, but uh, just my memory tells me that this is not big enough. I think he should be about this big. With this smaller size of his shoulder, it seems almost to me like 
Um, Ghidorah looks weaker than Godzilla, which it, it does bother me a bit. And that's one of the main reasons that this Ghidorah isn't one of my favorite monster arts. But uh, either way, he looks pretty nice. Of course, once I had a King Ghidorah, I had to get a Mothra. Mothra, Moth, Mothra. This is a Reveltech Mothra. I know it's a different line, but they go very well together. And if you need to understand why I need a Mothra to go with Ghidorah, either watch some of the older movies with uh, King Ghidorah versus Mothra, or more importantly, the real reason I had to get this Mothra, you need to go and check out Monster Island Buddies. So that's a channel on YouTube. Just type in Monster Island Buddies. That show is awesome, and it just makes me laugh out loud. I love it. And then you will fully understand why you need to have a Mothra to pose with your King Ghidorah. But anyway, they look pretty good together. But again, I think Mothra is a little bit too small now. So it's really hard to get scale right with all these guys. And part of the reason is we've got different eras interacting and also the cost of doing really big figures. Uh, but anyway, King Ghidorah comes with a huge pile of stands and three effect parts. So you can see the effect parts are like a, a spiral beam and uh, it's a gravity beam. I don't know exactly what gravity beams are supposed to do. I guess they make gravity change, maybe heavier or change direction. I'm not sure. But they are individually sculpted to be different from each other. And they're done. It's quite nice. Just focus in on it. Uh, quite attractive, but a little bit annoying to deal with. And given that they're so long, it's it's not uh, normal that you'll be able to post this on a shelf because they just take up too much space. They are flexible, so they're not going to break, even though they're so so thin. And to go with that, it comes with this stage, uh, along with some typical little stands like this. Oh, wrong way just to make up this basic unit. Now, that in itself is, is pretty much enough to pose the gravity beams on. What you can do is get these little clips and they peg onto the end, and then you just position one end of a beam in Ghidorah's mouth and put a clip around one of the other parts like that and I haven't got enough space here to show it really well or to show them all at the same time But basically you get this in front of them and you can line up all the beams however you want it But because he is quite a high figure They've given an alternate way to do this and that is to put the clip on the end of this rod Which is a little bit hard to get in and then the rod Can in turn clip onto the end of the stand like this. It's a little bit tight Probably because I never use it and you can see that's really quite high. So you could get Ghidorah shooting off up into the air like this. So you could, on the one stand you could have really high beams, really low beams. You've got everything you need to accomplish that. Uh, but again, it's a nice thought, but I don't really, I don't really like this. It looks a bit weird having all this plastic sticking off. I just wish that this could plug in. This is so light that uh, in this situation, I think that we really could have had the beam just tab right into the mouth and hold its own weight without the stand at all. And it's a bit of a lost opportunity that they didn't make that happen. I understand with the thicker beams on Godzilla, that's impossible, but this is actually very light and it was definitely something they could have done. My final thoughts on this figure. It's a good figure. Every Monster Arts so far has been a good figure, but uh, it did cost about $125 plus shipping. Um, the box that it comes in is really, really huge, and they haven't gone to any lengths to make it smaller, which could really impact on you depending on how your shipping is going to be calculated. Um, they could easily have made it so the wings unplug or the tails unplug, or just some part of it could come off so that the box could have been smaller. Uh, it didn't affect me too much, but definitely if you're getting it from Japan or somewhere, that might have an impact. 
overall, while the workmanship on how it looks is top notch, the engineering in this wing section is just inadequate and given the price point it's a bit disappointing um, it makes a good display piece but not a good toy and that is in direct contrast to Godzilla whereas because Godzilla is an awesome toy I mean before anything else you can play with that figure this is not a figure I feel like I can play with I just want to set it down and not break it a bit disappointing um, above all that he just doesn't gel with my my sensibilities aesthetically and that's because as I mentioned before I think I want the Showa King Ghidorah so can I recommend it yeah I can recommend getting it but would I buy it if it wasn't in the context of just getting virtually the whole line no I don't think so and if I knew for a fact that we were getting a different version of this guy I would probably sell it um, just because I would use that money to get another one anyway this is uh, my video review for SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah I'm Odean and thanks for watching